So, so what, what are the next, you know, uh, things that you are like kind of, you know, focusing on? You think that's, you know, okay, this is our next, you know, stage. So one of the things that we are now doing a lot of work on is cloud platforms. Okay. So because we realize, okay, we made the hardware simple, cheap. We have a ton of different hardwares, great. But then when you want to build a real mm -hmm. IoT project, then you need a cloud component. And right. a lot of the cloud software right now, it's very complex to use. Right. So we want to create tools that are simple to use, that support a ton of the classic use cases mm -hmm. so that people can easily build functioning IoT projects without having to understand every single technology along the chain, mm -hmm. uh, making it secure out of the box, so that they can start businesses, they can solve problems, maybe they don't start a business, maybe they do it non-profit, it doesn't matter, they solve problems, they create things. Right. Uh, so part of that, we're going to be releasing a ton of open source software there, but our focus is always user experience. Mm -hmm. How do I make the experience of building an IoT application okay. very simple from the node that's connected to your sensor, to the edge gateway, to the cloud, to the way I view the data, Everything needs to be like seamless and simple to use. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we're focusing on right now. And so, for example, uh, today we announced, for example, that you can use Arduino to program Linux machines, that you can connect Raspberry Pis, for example, or Intel uh, Linux machines to the Arduino cloud, and you can manage remotely, and you can update software, you can install software, you can do all sorts of maintenance on these Linux machines all through like a very simple web interface. Mm -hmm. That for me, for example, is another step of applying the Arduino philosophy to something that's complicated for a ton of people and making it super simple. But can you explain what is Arduino Cloud? You know, how does that? Yeah, so the Arduino Cloud is a platform that's, you know, slowly evolving. Mm -hmm. It's it's called Create, create.arduino.cc. It started off as us taking our development environment and bring it into the cloud. Okay. So that you just need a browser mm -hmm. and you can edit code, you can compile code, you can download it uh, into different Arduino boards. Then we started to add a section where people can publish a very detailed tutorials on how to build things. Mm -hmm. So that if you see somebody else's project and you like it and you want to build it, you press a button and that becomes a project okay. in your cloud, for example. Mm -hmm. So you can make it very easy for people to share their knowledge. And then we started now to add a bunch of IoT features mm -hmm. like managing all these Linux machines, programming this Linux machine like the were an Arduino machine because you have literally millions of people mm -hmm. that know how to program an Arduino. Right, right. So by giving them a way to take their knowledge on top of a Linux device, mm -hmm. then you're enabling them to do a ton of things that right. they were not able to do before. Right. Uh, and you even allow them to use things like OpenCV. So we have examples where you can use Arduino to do computer vision uh -huh. on an Intel Edge okay. device, <laughs> but you're recycling your existing Arduino knowledge. So, so when you talk about the cloud, is it like a private cloud using some you know, open source technologies, or you know, I'm just uh, yeah. Into... So the idea is that what we have right now is a bunch of modules that are uh, based on a bunch of open source components that we release uh, we release uh, openly, freely, mm -hmm. that's sitting on top of uh, Amazon AWS, okay. uh, which are kindly sponsoring. Okay. Uh, so for example, we are able to offer this thing for free to a ton of people in the community because Amazon is helping us. Okay. Uh, then what happens is the more modules will start to appear online, then it will evolve, it's evolving already into like a full-fledged IoT application development platform. Mm -hmm. And that will be available, again, as an open source right. uh, tool that you can install on like a single server, or you can, uh, or you will be able to get it as a white label. So if you start off playing around with Arduino and you build a project, and it becomes a product, and then and then you st then you can turn your account into a white label right. account and start serving customers with this thing, mm -hmm. and you can scale. Uh, so the idea is to really create more and more path that go from an idea to a kind of viable product that actually solves problems right. and remove obstacles along the way.
So since uh, Arduino has a very strong focus on open source, did you ever consider, you know, using OpenStack kind of solution to power the cloud itself or in the future or? Uh, so right now, uh, the, um, the work that we are doing is built a lot on Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So whatever platform that supports Kubernetes will be able to support our uh, Yeah, tools. Kubernetes is everywhere. These days. Yeah. It's becoming kind of Linux of cloud, literally. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so we are very lucky that we have um, Amazon support. and also CIA, our CIO, Luca, mm -hmm. who is very sort of good and forward-looking. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, when you talk about this cloud, uh, right now it's free of cost. Are you planning to commercialize it in the future for more advanced use cases? Or Yeah, so the idea is that now users get a bunch of, uh, you know, they, they, they can get... Um, they can use the platform for free. Some of the features are available for free also because the code that you put there mm -hmm. is automatically open source. Mm -hmm. The moment people will want to start having private uh, code they don't want to share with people okay. or they want to connect a lot of devices, then we will introduce this summer a paid version. Mm -hmm. But again, it will be a little bit based on, you know, if you want, you can have it open source mm -hmm. on your machine, whatever. Yeah, I mean, if GitHub does that too. You know, you can have a private repository internally and you can have public repository. So at the moment, the software you put there is open source right. by nature. Mm. Uh, but then in, in, in the summer, you can choose. Yeah, you I can. I want to pay some money and then it's private to me. And there also, there also will be some tools in the platform that will be co included in this subscription because maybe... I cannot go into much detail right, right now, but exactly. there are some tools that, uh, that, that, that are very intensive in terms of computation. Right. So that we need to also pass on this cost to the people. Who and then are, not everybody wants to use it, on certain yeah. people who want to use that. And, and it makes perfect sense because you may not want, even if open source, you, know, you may not want to have your code publicly available if you're a company. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to have a private repository somewhere within the... In so the, the strategy in Arduino is always to have one open source option where mm -hmm. I can do everything myself open source, yeah. one free option for people that want the simplicity but mm -hmm. don't really want to, or they cannot spend money, Right. and then a paid version. Mm -hmm. So if you have a free version, you also have to adhere to the open source right. ideas. If you don't want to adhere to open source and you want to do it, you pay money. Mm -hmm. So there are three different uh, right. three different models, and I think they cover. Uh, yeah, that's the perfect everybody. model. Yeah, 